Hello, everybody. Welcome to my talk. Um, so the presenter has been changed, but the topic will be the same. I'm also will add to the talk of Thomas. So I'm going to talk about extremely low volatility organic compounds, and these compounds we try to, to investigate in our aerosol chamber and also at our own research station in Melpitz. And um, Thomas gave already a really good introduction in the extremely low volatility organic compounds, and I don't want to repeat everything. Basically, I want to point out what was the motivation of this talk, and the motivation you find in this picture. Um, Thomas already explained, so we can see that from the alpha pinene or sonolysis, a huge amount of LVOX are formed, and when you turn on the seed particles, which is shown in red, the SOA formation starts and the organic mass is increasing. And this is so far what we know about the extremely low volatility organic compounds, but we have no idea what happened in the particle phase, and yeah, <laughs> and therefore um, the study was addressed. So um, we wanted to know how the LVOX are formed, what their fate is after the condensation, and also how they look like. Um, for this, um, we uh, went to our research station. It's also a GORE station, and it was in summer 2013. Here on the map, you can see it's located in the east part of Germany. And um, it was summer, so we had almost sunny days. We had no precipitation. And the temperature was between 15 to 30 degrees. So we had a lot of BVOCs, which were emitted. We brought a lot of instruments. And the most important instrument I'm going to talk about was the AMS and also um, the Chemical Ionization Atmospheric Pressure Interface Time of Flight Mass Spectrometer. Also, Thomas already introduced, so it's really good for me. <laughs> and um, we also collected several um, samples, like digital or burner, impact, burner impactor. And we also run thermal desorption gas chromatography mass spectrometry to determine the BVOC mixing ratio at our research station. On the other side, we also conducted a lot of um, chamber experiments. Here you can see a scheme of our chamber. It's pretty much a 19 cubic meter Teflon bag, um, where we oxidized alpha pinene with um, ozone in the presence of ammonium hydrogen sulfate. And what we usually do is we run our experiments in the batch mode. But for this type of study, we change to continuous flow conditions. This means alpha pinene and ozone um, enter the chamber for the whole time of the experiment. And at the same time, we take um, a huge amount of samples. So we have continuous flow conditions. This you can also see here in the scheme. So in green and in red, you have alpha pinene and ozone. And we run our experiments for 48 hours, so it was really a hard job. <laughs> and we also had really um, good um, profile for the LVOC concentration. We had, to, we had to run our um, experiments for 48 hours because um, we want to get enough particle mass to be analyzed. And also, the second important thing about our um, chamber experiment was that with these continuous flow conditions, we can go down to much um, more ambient conditions. So we um, had only 2.3 ppb alpha pinene in our chamber and 20 ppb ozone. So. With this, I want to come to the results. So at first, I'm going to talk about um, which LVOX we have identified in the field in the lab. Here again, you already saw a similar picture. It's a mass spectra, what we obtained from the Apitov measurements on the left side, and black from the leak chamber, on, on the right side, in red for Malpitz. And what you can see is we find a lot of similar signals, so it seems so that similar compounds are formed. This was also not so surprising for us, because from our GCMS measurements, we knew that alpha pinene was the most dominating peak at our research station. And since we also oxidized alpha pinene in the leak, so they should be more or less similar compounds. But um, we also had a problem. So you can see we have a lot of compounds. And then we thought, OK, what are the most important compounds? And for this reason, we also conducted flow tube experiments. And these experiments, alpha pinene and limonene were oxidized. The spectra were compared. And we tried to find compounds with an identical chemical composition. And indeed, we find, um, found several um, C10 compounds with 6 to 11 oxygens, which were formed from alpha pinene as well as from limonene. OK, then we knew the most important LVOC. Then we thought, OK, if, can we also detect these compounds from aerosol chamber experiments and also from the field study? And indeed, we find all of the most important LVOCs in leak and in melpits. 
Then, as already Thomas mentioned, we are able to detect the Siapitov um, radicals, especially IQ peroxy radicals. The existence of the IQ peroxy radicals was recently proven by our working group. It's also published in this paper. So we just add um, nitrogen oxide and we saw a nice degree. So indeed, they are IQ peroxy radicals. And from the same experiment, so alpha pinene with limonene, we identify the most, most important um, IQ peroxy radicals. And these were found with C1007, C1008, and C1010. And when you have a look here again to the leak and to the MAPID spectra, we can see that also these IQ peroxy radicals were found from leak and also from MAPIDs. So, so now you would maybe ask, okay, you can detect the LVOX in the gas phase. We heard this already from Thomas. So what, is, um, what happened in the particle phase? So is there really evidence that these compounds partition into the particle phase? And for this, um, we used the AMS data. Um, here is shown the ELVOC concentration for several measurement days at the uh, research station in Melpitz against the uh, um, carbon oxidation state, which was determined according to Jesse Kroll. And what you can see is, okay, we have a lot of um, similarities, <laughs> especially here in these highlighted sections. It seems so that at these sections we have really a good correlation between the LVOC formation and the oxidation state. Um, therefore, we try to focus on these selected um, areas here to keep in mind the picture again. Here is shown um, the focus on these highlighted sections, so again the LVOC formation against the oxidation state. And from this here, you can see that for the majority of these measurement days, there is really a good correlation between the elbow concentration and the increase in the oxidation state. So it seems really that the elbow in the gas phase um, partition onto the particle phase, which leads to this increase in the oxidation state. So with this, okay, we know they are formed, they partition, but what's now? Um, to answer this question, I ran hundreds of an offline analysis to detect these compounds somehow in the particle phase. Here is shown an overview about the conducted um, analysis. It's a little bit busy, but I will explain you. So basically, we went to Melpitz and to Leak, as I already uh, told you. We took the um, PM1 filter. We analyzed directly after extraction to get an idea if we can find um, LVOX or SOA marker compounds. We also did some derivatization. I will explain you later to get an idea if there are carbonyl compounds. It's the same we repeated for the leak filter. And in leak, we also um, did some additional experiments using denuder because LVOX are gas phase compounds, which we tried to also investigate. Then we also coated the denuder with a derivatization agent to get again an idea about carbonyl compounds and at the end we were quite depressed. We also ca um, coated out a noodle with ammonium hydrogen sulfate to see if there is a reaction of gas phase molecules with acidic compounds. All of these um, um, samples were analyzed with two different methods to be sure that the results are okay. And at the end of course we compared the lab and the field samples. Um, what we found um, besides pinic acid and tabernulic acid were um, three important classes of compounds, which seems to be quite interesting for us. So we found um, highly oxidized carbonyl compounds, which means they had an O2 ratio above 0.7. They were also containing carbonyl groups. Here you can see some examples, and these examples have also an O2 ratio above 1. Um, here for this compounds, we would suggest that they indeed are the ELVO compounds because the chemical composition corresponds well to the chemical composition determined by Michael Ehn. And we can state that the re they really contain carbonyl groups. Um, we also detect a lot of short chain carbonyl compounds, but I don't want to say much about this because it's still an investigation. And um, a second, really, uh, a third really important class of compounds were highly oxidized organosulfates. These guys had an O2 ratio above one, as you can see here from the, uh, from the examples, and these compounds were not reported so far in the literature. Um, now I want to say some words about the highly oxidized carbonyl compounds and also the highly oxidized organosulfates. 
as I said, we did some derivatization, so we used dinitrophenylhydrazine that selected for carbonyl groups, and from this you get also the number of the carbonyl groups. And here you can see a base B chromatogram from the derivatization, and we try to focus on a higher mass range. So you can see when you also focus on this range, there are still some compounds. Then we determined the chemical composition um, of these peaks and compared to the LVOX reported by Michael Ehn, and indeed they were the same. Here you can see the summary of the spectra, uh, base peak chromatogram. So we detected 13 carbonyl compounds. So as we were successfully detected from leak and from melpits. We also found corresponding signals from the CTAF measurements. And we can also um, prove that um, indeed LVOX contain carbonyl groups, which was up to now only suggested. The uh, other class of compounds which was really interesting were the highly oxidized organosulfates. Here you can see a summary of all um, detected organosulfates. Um, it's from C7 to C10. All of these compounds have an O to the ratio above 1, and they were successfully detected from leak and from Melpitz filter. Due to their high O to the ratio, we would suggest that LVOX are the precursor compounds from, for these highly oxidized organosulfates. And to prove this idea, we um, conducted these denuder measurements where we used pure X84 coated denuder and also denuder coated with ammonium hydrogen sulfate. And then we compared the extracts and we found um, that at least we could detect six of the highly oxidized organosulfates from these denuder um, experiments. So we would suggest that LVOX. Um, as we got the LVOX by the denuder measurements, they reacted with our ammonium hydrogen sulfate, and then they formed these um, highly oxidized organosulfates. Based on this, we would suggest that um, um, highly oxidized organosulfates are formed by the attack of um, HSO4 minus, then we lose O2 and HO2, which can be expected for these multiple hydroperoxide groups, and then we can form highly oxidized organosulfates, and with this idea, at least we can explain four of the organosulfates. Sulfates. I know that's not much, but um, the gaps here are, can be easily explained because we are still working on the identification of all the other compounds. And when we have an idea about the other chemical compositions, maybe we can fill these gaps. With this, I want to close my talk and draw some conclusions about the fate of the LVOX. So based of our, on our obtained data set, we would suggest that the LVOX can condense as an intact molecule into the particle phase. This would explain our highly oxidized carbonyl compounds detected in the um, particle phase. They might also decompose under fragmentation of the carbon skeleton. So on this way, maybe we can explain the short chain carbonyl compounds which we have detected. And last but not least, they can react with sulfur content compounds like, like HSO4 minus, and this um, leads to the formation of highly oxidized organosulfates, which are indeed maybe a new class of compounds. With this, thank you for your attention. I think we have time for one question, if, if there is. Yes, back here, Jason. Anka, very nice talk. I just had one question. It was a little unclear to me how the organosulfates were forming. It doesn't seem that you're proposing a hydrolysis or a condensation reaction. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So we're still thinking about the mechanism. It's just um, yeah, a theory um, how to explain these organosulfates because up to now it's really not clear for us or not clear to everybody in the elbow community. So it's only an idea. <laughs>